meter with a meter. You test the equipment with a meter, but the qualified person needs to know how to use a meter, choose the right meter, and know where to take the measurements at. Okay, how to take the measurements, where to take the measurements at. So a qualified person needs this type of skill. This type of skill set, which is basically familiarity with the equipment that they're using. The qualified person crossing the lumen approach boundary needs the skills and techniques necessary to determine the nominal voltage of the exposed energizing conductors and circuit parts. How do you determine what the voltage level is before you open the cabinet? You need to know what the voltages are before you open those cabinets. How many voltage levels, where are they, what are they being fed from? Okay, so you can look on the drawings, you can look on the equipment. The equipment might be labeled, it should be labeled. If it complies with code today, it will be labeled as to what the voltage is and where the cutoff is. Okay, if there's more than one power source, it should be labeled. If it's not labeled, you can actually use the drawings, look at drawings. You can walk the systems down. But the qualified person needs this skill set to be able to identify what the voltage is before the cabinet door is open. The qualified person needs to be familiar with the approach distances, minimum distances. That's just what we talked about. Those distances can always be expanded, but you've got minimums that cannot get any closer. You've got to be familiar, qualified person, with the decision-making process that determines the degree and the extent of the hazard and the necessary PPE. Well, we talked about that one yesterday. What determines what the hazard is, is the short circuit current at that point and the overcurrent protection upstream. <coughs> if that overcurrent protection takes a long time to trip to clear, you got a huge explosion. And if it takes a short time to clear, you got a very small explosion. So the fault current, short circuit current, and the upstream overcurrent device is the deter what makes the determination of what the hazard is and the type of PPE you're going to use. And also on how the job is going to be planned. Okay, now employee training for qualified persons, an employee undergoing on-the-job training can be considered to be a qualified person for certain tasks if they demonstrate an ability to perform duty safely at his or her level of training and be under the direct supervision of a qualified person. That comes straight from OSHA, directly from OSHA. That's note two from OSHA. The person being trained, once they demonstrate the ability to perform a task, they are now the qualified person for that task. The supervisor only has to hold their hand one time, stand over and watch them one time. Once they demonstrate it, they own it. Which brings up that again possibility, what if they're uncomfortable with the task? then they darn well better say something at that point in time because they're considered to be the qualified person. So that definition works both ways. The employee's got to be trained on voltage detectors, how to select the appropriate detector, demonstrate how to verify to use the voltage detector, and the training must include all limitations of the voltage detector. Well, let me do some drawings for you guys. Let's test your knowledge on meters real quick. General knowledge. Here I got a piece of equipment.